One major cruise line is requiring some passengers to test on all 18 of their ships. This is your Cruise News Fix. Well, these rescues off the coast of Cuba are becoming an almost everyday occurrence, and this time it was with the Disney Dream. While the ship was on her way to Castaway Cay, Disney's private island, a man was seen in the water far off the coast of Cuba. According to passengers, the ship's captain announced that they would be turning around to investigate. The man who was clinging to a surfboard is reported to be a 29-year-old Cuban. He was pulled up and rescued by Disney Dream crew members, and Cuban authorities arrived shortly thereafter to get the man. Also floating out in the water was an abandoned makeshift barge or boat, which the man in question may or may not have come from. And we can tie this into a story from Wednesday when we told you about the overflowing pool that caused a waterfall feature on the Harmony of the Seas. And that overflowing pool was actually caused by Harmony conducting an emergency maneuver to avoid hitting a refugee raft off the coast of Cuba. While dramatic and startling for the passengers on board, this is actually a safe maneuver for the ship. And as we reported previously, no one on board was injured, except maybe some of the plants in Central Park. It was later determined that the raft that Harmony of the Seas maneuvered to avoid was empty, and no rescue was needed. Now, we've all spent the last couple of years trying to stay updated on current health protocols and procedures for our cruises, but lately we've been able to cruise pretty much as we had prior to 2020. But for some Norwegian cruise line passengers, that's all about to change. Yesterday, NCL announced that they're implementing more restrictive health and safety protocols, including requiring tests for some passengers on all of its ships through the end of January. All 18 of Norwegian ships will be using the tighter protocols that will apply to guests that have recently visited mainland China, Hong Kong, or Macau, or hold passports from those countries. Those guests must also show that they've been fully vaccinated and boosted against COVID-19. Now, affected guests will also be required to take a medically supervised PCR test at the port prior to embarkation, as well as other testing throughout the voyage. If these new protocols apply to you and you're sailing this month, we recommend you reach out to your travel advisor or NCL directly to make sure you have all the information. In other Norwegian cruise line news, the company has announced that they will host 13 different charter voyages on board Norwegian Pearl as part of their new Experiences at Sea program. We'll host consecutive cruises over 66 nights starting later this month. The cruises will sail from Miami to the Caribbean and some of the highlighted cruises are the Rock Boat 22 hosted by Sister Hazel, Chris Jericho's Rock and Wrestling Rager at Sea, the Beach Boys Cruise, and a whole lot more. Have you ever been on a theme cruise? And if so, what did you think? Let us know down in the comments. Now, I talked to some guys on Carnival Horizon last year that do the 80s cruises every year, and I know that's something I would love. Something else I would love is for you to consider subscribing to our channel. We love cruising and making videos like ship tours, reviews, vlogs, parody songs, and news updates like this. So we appreciate your support and thanks in advance. What's better than a world cruise? Two world cruises. And today in an industry first, two MSC ships have departed from Genoa, Italy for simultaneous world cruises. The MSC Poesia and MSC Magnifica will sail together for the start of their respective voyages before they part ways at the edge of the Mediterranean Sea for different routes around the globe. Poesia is sailing a 117 day voyage that will cross the Atlantic, transit the Panama Canal and travel up the west coast of Central America and North America before sailing the Pacific Ocean to Asia. She'll then cross the Indian Ocean and return to the Mediterranean via the Suez Canal. In total, MSC Poesia will call 53 ports in 33 different countries. The Magnifica's 119-day sailing will sail around South America after crossing the Atlantic, then cross the South Pacific Ocean onto the Indian Ocean, the Arabian Sea, the Red Sea, and then through the Suez Canal into the Mediterranean. That cruise will be visiting 43 destinations in 24 countries. But MSC isn't the only line heading out to cruise the world this week. The Costa Deliciosa departs on her Around the World cruise tomorrow from Trieste. The Deliciosa's world tour will explore 52 destinations on four continents in 128 days, crossing three oceans. Ah, uh, life goals. With a name like the Cruise World, we've got to make sure we get on one of those world cruises sometime soon. Carnival Corporation recently announced that they would be getting rid of some of their ships soon. And though there's been a lot of speculation as to which brands and ships would be affected, we now know that one of them will be from Aida Cruises. The Aida Aura will leave its fleet this September, and the German brand has announced a farewell season for the ship, 
kicking off on January 9th, 2023 in Cape Town, with the first of a total of four 14-day voyages to South Africa and Namibia. The Aida Aura has been in service since 2003. One of the things that frustrates me as a content creator is the lack of good Wi-Fi on board most cruise ships, and a solution to that issue is Starlink satellite internet. This week, American Cruise Lines announced that they've added Starlink to their 2023 fleet of riverboats and small cruise ships. The new Starlink satellite service is a major upgrade and ensures seamless connectivity and provides stable Wi-Fi regardless of location. American Cruise Lines beta tested the Starlink service last year, and guests who had the chance to experience it had positive reviews. The new high-speed Starlink Wi-Fi will be complimentary on all 2023 cruises, and hey Carnival, if you want to raise our internet again, this better be the kind of service that you're providing us. That's your cruise news fix for today. Next up, check out this interview we did with Porthole Magazine's 2022 Cruise Director of the Year, Lee Mason. And as always, remember, life is short and cruising is fun. We'll see you next time.